In this video, I'm going to show you a breakdown of the meta deck tier list for Phantom Nightmare. I want to give you guys a bit of an update on what I think might be the best deck. Some dark horses as well as, you know, break down some of the support that some of these archetypes are getting, which I have included here. Uh, you can see on the screen, we have 35 archetypes. So there is a lot of cool and interesting things coming in Phantom Nightmare. Let's not waste any time. Let's get straight into it. But before we do, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what other content you'd like me to cover for Phantom Nightmare. Let's start off with the first one. So this is a Romage slash plants um, pile plant deck, which I never thought I'd say. This is an amazing tuner, uh, which basically facilitates the whole new Romage line, which does help you get into the Sanavalon line. Of course, Concon, one of the best cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! is something the Sanctuary cannot protect. I think Sanavalon and Plant is a dark horse, and they have just way too much support to ignore. I will be putting plants in tier 1.5. I think if Kashtira is very, very popular, this will quickly go down to tier 2. Uh, or even tier 3 so there you go if Kashtira is really popular which it, apparently it might do with the TCG exclusive psychic cards this will drop down significantly moving on is Centurion so we are getting the pack bin level A synchro which is a boost to the archetype gives them a level A bridge which sometimes they were missing but let's really understand why this deck is being talked about it's because of the Horus cards and potentially the deity Horus as well as just generic Horus stuff that keeps just being a strong engine and I think Centurion with all the hand traps, you know, Bell is becoming really popular. I'm going to put this in tier 1. I think Centurion is a very powerful deck in the game. They just don't care about other people's strategies. Calamity Lock is still broken. As a deck on its own, it's very, very strong. And Legacy of Destruction, they do have new support. But I do see a game more popular as well. We're going to cover you, Bell, because it is one of the, you know, if not the premier Phantom Nightmare archetype. On its own, I don't think it's that good. I think it's an anti-meta deck that focuses on using super polymerization of the opponent's monsters. You know, me putting this in tier 3 does not mean it's terrible. I think you can have a lot of fun and a lot of success with you, Bell. You can easily play it again as an anti-meta deck. Coincidentally, the Unchained deck is all about popping cards with the Berserk Ashfiend as well. There is a Fiend power deck that may happen. And for all we know, this could be bumped up to tier 2 or even 1.5. Ashen is another deck I don't see much happening. I would love to be proven wrong. I actually think for once, the Wave 1 support is going to attract a lot of players. I really think it is. And the artwork is insane. The playstyle is very interesting. And they clearly have a lot of potential. Although we say that for every single TCG exclusive archetype. We've got Field Spell Interaction, which is really interesting. A lot of decks in the game do need that. Kashtira, Centurion, uh, Manadon, for example. Uh, Fire Kings and the Snake High uh, Viking Island. Maybe they get splashed with another engine, like maybe Good Stuff Kashtira, Good Stuff uh, Dogmatica. For some reason, I see Dogmatica and Ashen as a very uh, combinable archetype. Let's see what happens with that one, though, in the future. Uh, next up is Silent Force. I am putting this in tier one. I think a lot of people don't really understand how this deck works. And I'll be honest, on paper, it looks really basic, but the simplicity and the efficiency of this ritual strategy makes it a powerhouse. You can run a lot of an engine and get away with it. You can play through Droll, you can play through Anti-Spell. And if you're curious how that happens, I will be posting a video soon with my um, dual commentary over Silent Force, which you guys preferred as well, which is commentary, where I show, you know, some more nuanced gameplay of the deck itself against things like Anti-Spell, and it is crazy, guys. This is pure Snake Eyes, by the way, so I'm going to put this in Tier 1 as well. It's a very high-intensity combo deck. It does use a lot of resources, but Poplar or Populous is the card that helps facilitate that. Of course, when it goes Grave, it will go to the ST zone. You know, Snake Eye Ash is an incredible card now because of Populous, which when added will special, when special will add a sinful spoil spell or trap. It kind of has that good stuff negate end board, which is like Appaloosa, Baron, and maybe one or two other disruptions and hand traps. And in that sense, it feels like a power creep to Powell Adventure, uh, actually, which is quite crazy. I think it is a really fragile deck though. And I do feel like Kashtira, again, if popular, will be the anti-meta meta check to actually humble a lot of these archetypes that I will be putting in tier 1. Uh, next up is Goti. This is a deck that ironically, you know, kind of plays the same as Kashtira. And for that reason, I'm going to put it in tier 2. It can play Shifter. By default, you're going to win a lot of matchups. I mean, Tournament is still doing amazing. Uh, Runic strategies are very, very popular. Viking needs the graveyard. Reading those two Goti cards, which I do cover in my Get These Cards for Phantom Nightmare video, uh, definitely recommend you go check that out as well. I do break down how these cards work and why it's a big deal. Both the cards do like a million things for Goatee, which uh, we want to see more of. So yeah, I think that's got a lot of potential. And there are some low-key fish generic support cards in the same set. So I am putting in tier two. Again, that might be controversial, but I really have high hopes for the deck. You know, it is the year of the fire, but maybe the Goatee deck will extinguish all of them. We'll have to wait and see. Next up though is a Salamangri, which gets support because of Fire Princess. Of course, the access code OTK is very, very easy. The end board is really strong with a counter trap 
with hand traps as well whether it will win a ycs no i don't really think so i even want to put in tier 3 almost but i think the deck has got a lot of buffs the illusion guys are getting some new cards as well Obviously, legacy of destruction has the really imp impressive support but for now i think this is a solid pick still you know this could be like another tier 2 strong deck um i could see ways where this is tier 1.5 you know because of the runic because of the earthbound cards there is again some sort of power deck that's being formed right now with fusions but i do think it is super susceptible to draw and lockbird and basically to any hand trap they literally main deck cross out uh, and i think they do that for a reason because the deck is very fragile but you know sometimes you will draw the best hand in the game and it may be one of the best starting hands in the game uh, so for that reason i will put it in the tier 2 spot when i'm showing earthbound this is basically earthbound runic which has become really popular i think joshua schmidt was you know really frontlining this archetype i think he played it against pack in a youtube video and that is seemed to be quite popular i was watching myself and i was honestly very surprised and kind of taken back by how strong it is i'm kind of hesitant to do 1.5 and tier 2 but i think it is 1.5 because the runic strategy is just too powerful and the earthbound strategy doesn't seem to have many limitations with the metamorphosis card i think this deck has a lot of potential uh, to cheat out a lot of things in the main deck and i think with the earthbound monsters you have a lot of potential with harmonic synchro fusion there is some black garden rose maiden tech that's happening as well which coincidentally has a lot of synergy with the earthbound runic monsters and right now you know it doesn't lose to droll as much as you think can always just do your replays on the opponent's turn so for that reason i think it's very resilient i mean i think we all know where gate guardian is going but i really want to shout out dark guardian and the powerful broken uh, fusion spell i mean if you love gate guardian i don't think anyone is complaining um, and i think that's the coolest thing about this archetype they've really done it well and you can suddenly have a access code or tk climb or you can just summon gate guardian and have a million negates and again dark guardian if you've read that card it's actually kind of crazy it's a boss monster it's a finisher it's a towers all in one and the fusion spell is just ridiculous as well so definitely something i could even see myself playing in the future this is obviously in tier 0.5 i don't think many people would disagree with me i really think it will be though with the snake eye support it's just too consistent obviously we've seen elifter go to one but fucking doesn't really have any hits because it's still way too brand new for that reason and you know we are potentially seeing a repeat of what happened in the ocg with fucking and labyrinth with transaction rollback and that would mean they're both in tier 0.5 they have built-in spell trap negation and monster negation i think there are cards that can easily counter the strategy like soul release but they can even tech in anti spells so they already have ways to beat whatever people are countering them with and it's probably the one deck you should be siding for i don't really know what's gonna happen to manadium i really want to put this in tier one but i think i'm kidding myself and i should put it in tier 1.5 just because the deck still is a glass cannon and loser to droll i mean there are obviously so many ways you can play through droll and i have done those on the channel you can definitely go check those videos out you know utilizing things like clear new world and the vader package but when the mana name strike can't be stopped it's basically an ftk couldn't even count on my hand the amount of times i've built and then bought and people just scoop even going second is really powerful because of vicious astro loud the next one is horus now i'm kind of putting this as pure horus slash horus runic i think people don't even really know what the new cards do and i think that's what's going to catch them off guard if people tech in soul release yeah it's going to be a problem for the deck which cannot play anti-spell because everything they use are spells like the sarcophagus so i'm very curious what will happen going second I don't think Horus does anything at all. But going first, it's really, really powerful. And I think Tidy with even just a tiny runic engine is going to be quite a disaster for the opponent. I'm not sure where Infernoble goes. I feel like I want to put it in the highest of tier 3, but maybe the lowest of tier 2. Isolde obviously here. Isolde is actually an archetype card for the deck. Whether the deck doesn't care because of Populous, I would even say it was the best combo deck of the format before the ban list. So it's definitely got some promise and I think I'm going to put it in tier 2 for now. I honestly want to put Goblin back in like a tier 2.5 spot just because the rank 3 um, spam ability is really promising. You could run a lot of non-engine and hand traps. MBT did a video covering the Goblin Barker archetype and it seemed quite strong. But you know what? This is going to go in tier 3. Um, I could see how frail the archetype was at the same time. The next one is Beastial uh, Runic, which is another popular deck which won a YCS. Kind of the same as Earthbound Runic. I wonder because of the fire monsters coming into the format, will people play less Beastials, which means this deck can combo off more. As long as Fountain is on the field, it doesn't matter. You can draw Beastials when on the opponent's turn. You can draw hand traps, you can draw more runic spells. And that just seems like a really overpowered strategy. The next one is runic stun. You know what? I'm going to put this in tier 3 because I remember that all the floodgates were limited except skill drain. And so for that reason, it will go in tier 3. But uh, Florandries is the funniest deck I've ever seen. Uh, but I can't believe this deck actually has support. There is a card that can tribute a wing beast and searches a wing beast of a specific level. You have now three more ways to dodge Imp and Vela. I can see this deck being a possible anti-meta strategy similar to Kashtira. But I do think Kashtira will be the best version of them all, of all the shifter decks. The purely players who still play purely 
uh, are quite good with the archetypes so you have some tough opponents and so for that reason i feel like it's quite a skilled archetype to play and you are rewarded for it let's put it in tier 1.5 for now and um, it does do really well in ycs's i feel like people are still siding heard of the abyss and in a format where there's 35 decks we're looking at this is minus all the other rogue strategies i feel like that should be reason enough to at least put it in tier 1.5 let's quickly cover dinos this hasn't really got much new support but it's still one of the most powerful rogue strategies in the game conductor is probably one of the best if not one of the best boss monsters in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! history. It can trigger things like Petirodon to bring out Pancrotops, which is a second disruption. They can end on like six plus negates. A kind of a crazy archetype, honestly. And if Misk resolves, especially chaining to a disruption, um, that's GG. So not that these are in order, but I feel like it should be a very high tier too. With Transaction Rollback and the Black Goat Trap card, I think this deck is easily tier 0 0.5. Labyrinth and Fire King will be dominating the format, and we're clearly seeing that everyone is trying out gold spell once again if you've played against it recently you know how resilient the deck is and it just does not give up without a fight sometimes i'll see game ones going for 30 minutes because of the back and forth you know arias being able to constantly come back from the graveyard is kind of busted and then you have transaction which correct me if i'm wrong in the comments as well you know if you copy the effect of a big welcome or a welcome you cannot use a hand trap on it they either rip it cards out of your hand or certain cards like D Barrier, Epidemic Virus. For some reason, Drive is popping up, and you know, a time where people are forgetting about this deck. In a Droll dependent format, though, I'm not sure if it's going to stay here for too long. I think this should go in tier two. I feel like if you let the Drive strategy play on, which is extremely consistent, uh, you're probably getting FDK'd by a Vanity Monster, or you're getting your turn skipped by Ammo Factor, the Ritual Monster. It feels weird to put this in tier three, but at the same time, I'm going to be a little bit harsh here and leave it there. Dark Your Dark Angel thing isn't really doing much anymore. I think this deck has unfortunately been outclassed and power crept by a lot of the format. Like, if I was to compare heroes with all these other decks, obviously, Goatee is a very fresh one, so keep that in mind. But I could be wrong about Goatee, it could actually be a tier three deck. I think Orca's Runic is probably the best way to play this deck, and because it has Runic by default, it should have a high spot because of that rotating field spell with Babu and Fountain. It just means you're always going to be playing on your opponent's turn, which is hilarious. They have an infinite resource game with shuffling in. Seeing the sprite cards come back off the ban list makes you want to put this in tier 1.5. We've seen this deck dominate the Europe format in Euros. Uh, we'll have to see how much it does against the Fire King deck. Of course, Sanctuary can protect Fire King Island. Dagger, Don of Ohio is really powerful by himself. The Rex uh, monster is really, really powerful too. One of the best cards. I mean, that is how you power creep and archetype by giving them a broken card like that i honestly thought tournament would be dead after the agido killback hits but apparently not i don't know if it's people not playing enough bestials to counter them disrespecting tournament letting them trigger their mills but it seems like the second something good mills they are off to the races thanks to basically the new psychic cards coming out but also the archetype as a whole just being generically more powerful it's a power creep to many many archetypes in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh. but the issue is kashtira you know loses quite badly to labyrinth it's one of its worst matchups so you know this is of course a prediction before phantom knife is released keep that in mind maybe it should just be a tier 2 deck and so in that case i'm going to drop it down now i do think labyrinth is really dominant but it seems to be the classic go-to anti-meta deck for now i put one of my own archetypes here which is draco slayer but i'm going to put it in tier 3 um, it's a combo deck that basically does um, a very strong end board, don't get me wrong. A very good OTK option if put in the form of an Axis Gold Climb with Beyond. And it does have significant buffs with the Magic Spectre one card combo with Raccoon and the Porcupine, which is basically a one card Beyond the Penja, which you didn't really see before. It can be combined with Super Heavy. Also, Promethean Princess can bring back Ignista to have that non one turn effect keep looping. I think Branded is a really tough deck to analyze. I, f I don't want to put it in tier 1.5 or tier 2. It feels like a tier 1.75 deck. This new Polymerization Metamorphosis card may change this deck and make it even more of a powerhouse. You know, it can play through Ash quite well now because Nadir Servant cross out. It seems like the Puppy Lock is still just very, very powerful. Very broken, actually, because less Beastles are in the game because of the fire support. You can see the ripple effect there. You know, for that reason, Branded may actually win a YCS, which I would love to see. Let's put it in tier two. Uh, but I'd love to be proven wrong with this deck and hopefully it does win a YCS. That would be insane. We've got some powerhouses left. We've got five decks that really, you know, whoop the meta in the last format. I think a lot of decks are looking down on Rescue Ace. This deck benefits the most from Populous uh, because of the airlift to hit to one. So this kind of, you know, makes up for that. And because of that, I think the deck is going to be really strong into the next format. Setting those four cards are crazy. Whether that matters in a labyrinth format, I'm honestly not sure. You know, if you time, for example, the turbulence well at the perfect time, the fact it will see something leave the field and then it will trigger its own destruction 
Um, he's honestly going to win games. I can really notice the power level in this deck. Um, so I feel like the players who still stick to Rescue Ace are going to be quite powerful, similar to Purely, actually, uh, which was also an amazing defenders. Again, Populous just existing. Promethean Princess just existing is enough reason to put this in tier one. With Unchained, we're getting Berserk Archfiend, but I'm not actually sure if that's going to do much for the deck. The Shavara hit does hurt the deck quite a lot. It's at one for a reason. It was quite a powerful card, but the Unchained deck has been showing up in a lot of Mero pods and doing really well. So, you know, maybe I'm wrong and it is still tier 1.5. We'll have to wait and see. I think Dragon Link drops down significantly because of the fire support. Less Dark and Light monsters are in the graveyards. But if we see Labyrinth, you know, taking over, if we see any form of Rooney taking over, uh, Dragon Link then might be quite decent. We are in a droll format though, so maybe not. With the Sprite cards coming off the ban list, Sprite Adventure Melfi seems to be doing quite well again. I think it's more of a tier 2 deck. Um, something you can just rely on and play and do really well at regional. It feels like the same power level as the Chimera deck. This is obviously a broken boss monster. Brind is obviously amazing with Angler. It's a great combo. The Melfi cards are great. Summoning Herald of the Arc Light, which actually, the more I think about it, is a good counter to Fire King. Can also stop other things like sending cards on the hand to the graveyard, which the Fire King deck, again, will need to destroy. As well as the Diabell Star package. Does seem like the good stuff meta deck you can pick up and just enjoy and actually do really well with. The last one is Vanquish Soul, which I did rate quite highly in my previous tier list. I don't think it's tier 1.5. We didn't get new support for it, but the fact you can play Bell and benefit from the Earth attribute is quite nice. If you're a good Vanquish Soul player who's been playing the deck for a long time, you are the kind of player who probably will do extremely well. But for that reason, I'm gonna put it in like tier two, just, just because it won't be as popular of a deck. In this part of the video, I'm gonna do a reshuffle of the tier list. After looking at the tier list, I think there are some things I should be shuffling around. So let's quickly break these down. I think tier 0 0.5, and tier 1 feels good to me. These seem great. Whether a runic archetype should be in tier 1, I think that is actually the question. What we have seen results for is the Fahaya runic sprite version. So you know what guys, let's put that to tier 1. Silent Force, you know, I may be showing my bias, potentially, but I think it's going to be really dominant. You can play for a lot of things the format is doing right now. I don't think Labyrinth hurts it that much as well. A 4100 is an insane stat for a ritual monster to have. Next up is the plant deck. I mean, guys, I think I was kidding myself with this one. I definitely see Kashtera being popular, being the best shifter strategy at the moment. But for some reason, I want to put Branded in 1.5. I'm not entirely sure um, if I'm going crazy there. But you know what, guys, let's do it. Let's put this in tier 1.5. I just feel like the branded deck has some innovation still left with it. These generic fusion and synchro support cards are going to help the deck. And I definitely think there's room for this deck to explore. I think Unchained is piloted by some of the best players in Yu-Gi-Oh. If we're going to see results for one deck, I would definitely count on Unchained. Unchained seems very promising as a tier 1.5 deck. Having a look at the rest of the tier 2s, it feels okay to me. I kind of want to put Dragon Link in tier 3. I can't believe I'm saying that. But I actually think Dragon Link should be in tier 3. On second thought, I feel like even Orcus could be a tier 3 strategy as well. Even though it's great to have the Hot Pora, the deck still needs that first line to go through. If it's stopped, it kind of just does nothing. I've also updated Drytron to be in tier 3 as well. If I was going to compare it to another combo deck like Manadium, if I was going to compare it to another ritual deck like Silent Fork, Voiceless Voice, we're going to rewind and go back to Voiceless Voice. After second thought, after thinking about the archetype, the potential it has, Yes, it's very powerful. Yes, it has a lot of cool tricks. It has a Soravis um, Summon Negation, which can kind of be played around because it's the Solemn Judgment Negation. It has a Sword Swap Blacker, which honestly is just one pop. So I'm going to put Voices Voice in tier 1.5. I've actually downgraded the deck that I'll be playing next format. And with that being said, guys, that has been my tier list for Phantom Nightmare. What did you think about these options uh, in the video? You know, with these Phantom Nightmare decks, especially like Ashen and any of the Fire Support decks, you know, do you agree with my picks here? What deck have I missed? Let me know in the comments as well. Get ready for my update voiceless voice archetype, which will be coming out once the set releases. And that be said, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.